they play Easy Hood bands LeBlanc themselves. Yep. Oh, uh, the Cassidy band coming in before anything else. That is a bit of a flex pick for KT Rolster. There's that Vagar band as well. Once again, our last week of patch 5.3, so Vagar is kind of much banned or a must ban at this point. Until he is brutally oh, they, nerfed into the ground. The Callista ban, a bit of a surprise. That hasn't been. Uh, uh, Bang's, been Bang's been doing pretty well on it overall, and if Arrow. Arrow did have some extreme trouble against OQ with that champion. And there is Thresh removed as well. So they're taking away some of these lane picks at trying to keep Arrow and Fixer alive. This is the keep Arrow and Fixer alive ban phase. I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. Do you think we're going to maybe see them try to set up a comp that's going to allow them to uh, lane swap too, possibly? Nah, if you're going to ban that, you probably don't want to lane swap just because otherwise that, that does ruin a bit of the, the point of the Takes away bands, some of your bands in, the, yeah. in the first place. And if they pick Corky, which they probably assumed that SKT would, they can get uh, something more beneficial, maybe or will play the Lucian or something like that, so they can have at least the champion pick edge in the 2v2. Lissandra hovered over Lissandra Jarvin. Jarvin. I think Lissandra Jarvin is, is a great pickup. Ekarim might be interesting as well. You know, that reminds me, we still haven't seen Ambition play Jungle Noodling. Yeah, it's surprising, very yeah. surprising. I know that was our last match, but uh, we forgot to talk about that. Lulu Jarvin, okay. And yeah, immediately the Vi. Vi Zareth, yeah. Oh boy. So back to Easy Hood Zareth, he is quite a skilled player on that champion. I think Ezreal would be a pretty good choice here. You've got some great poke already, good way to get into the back line. SKT lacking a bit in terms of a tank to run some interference. They're going to need to play a disengage support with this, either Janna or Nami. Nagne's Ezreal has been quite potent, would be a bit of a farm lane. We've seen that matchup played quite a bit, Ezreal versus Zareth in the mid lane. Huh. And they could be going for that backline poke. I think that's actually really smart. It's uh, against Zareth's mobility, having the Ezreal Graves ultimates just to chunk him out or maybe even kill him. Oh boy, if they go with Kog'Ma though, if, right. they, if they try to run the Jugger'Ma, that's particularly vulnerable against the Vi, I feel. I think they'd be much better off going against, going with the Graves right here, actually. Yeah. But they're going to lock in the Kog'Ma. Oh boy, here we go. Inspired by CJ, they're like, well, if they can do it, we can do it. Here comes the Jugger'Ma. Well, and they picked it into Vi. What do you think about that? I think that Maokai is still available, and that would cause them <laughs> even further problems. They can pick Maokai Janna right here. Yep. And feel okay about this team composition and the amount of engage that they have onto KT Rolster. And Marin has been preferring to play that Maokai. They could also just take Hecarim, frankly. Either would be very good against this. Nothing is stopping Hecarim from getting into the back lines onto uh, Kog'Ma. Those shields uh, don't work quite as well when you're feared during uh, a lot of the duration of it. Right, you can wait out the storm as it were. Yep. I don't think they should take any. I think they have enough. Th no, no, no. They should take Janna here for the peel as opposed to getting more engaged. You have five Maokai. That is sufficient amounts of engage. Or not. Wolf is taking the Annie anyway in defiance of Monte Cristo's wishes. He did play really well on it last time, and he's comfortable on that champion, I can understand. But did. we did see the Maokai Ani combo in our last game, and it really wasn't able to put much of a dent into the Juggermaw composition. They did get behind early, however. Oh, I think Janna would be a great pickup. I'm surprised SKG left this open because it's I just. Think you, I think you definitely take the Janna right it's there. It's another right shield there. for Kogma as well, too. I don't know why they didn't. I think SKG should have taken the Janna, but. We'll see if they actually pay for it. That's just another tool for disengage, and like you said, another shield. You could argue, though, that uh, if you catch Lulu, if you catch Janna with this heavy engage comp, you can deny those shields from being on Kog'Maw because the person who would put them there is dead. So that's uh, that's one way to go about handling it, I can see. The issue is, is that if you use those cooldowns, well, then you don't have them for Kog'Maw, and then he just, runs, too. he just runs around and kites you with Trinity Force. So there's, there's a bit of give and take right there. That's why this composition works so well. Um, it's it's just hard to play properly, well, but a lot we'll see of, if they can do it. I mean, a lot of pressure is going to be on Arrow to have the proper positioning in teamfights because, again, you know, we've seen you have to really walk that tightrope 
as the AD carry on Kogma to stay close enough to do damage, but just far enough away that you deny a lot of that engage. And it's going to be, I think Arrow's going to have a bit of a challenge with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit leery about this, especially, like you said, with that Vi being picked up, but yep. maybe KT will be able to pull this one out and turn it into a win. I'm nervous, though. Very nervous. Me too. We'll see if they can handle it. Here we go, guys. Game one, SKT versus K2. Who's going to take it? Let's get in the game. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift, SK Telecom versus KT Rolster. And uh, despite what people assume may happen in that series, I, I always love the Telecom War, you know, again, it just can't be overstated just how big this matchup is in uh, Korean esports. It's, it's the biggest. It is the biggest, yeah, and one of the longest lasting as well, if not the longest. Stretches back a long time. Someday going to giggle while he runs away from a sapling. And begging no surprise, the only Korean jungler so far to play Vi. All sorts of delicious food here in the studio today. We're not getting to eat any of it though. Sad times. Yep. I'm feeling hungry now. Now I am hoping for 2 <laughs> Stomach's growling. Wow. How fickle you are, Doa. I know. I can't help it. If I, don't, if I don't eat, I'll starve to death. You wouldn't be a very good ascetic, Doa, because hmm? you can't starve yourself for beauty. That's true. I'm disappointed. You have to, you have to. I, I wasn't leave, made for television, leave, apparently. Leave this, you have to ignore the gross concerns of the flesh uh -huh. in order to experience the best possible match right now. What so if please. you just avoid like healthy things? And then <laughs> you have more time for the match. Like, what? I don't know, exercise, carrots. Everything. That's the Everything. Thing. That's that's the true aesthetic way. I have to avoid everything? Everything in the physical the plane. Secret, the secret to Monte Cristo's <laughs> analysis finally revealed. <laughs> everything. You can't, you can't bend to hunger when there is beautiful gameplay to watch. What if the gameplay is the hunger? What if it's the hunger games? <laughs> Wolf trying to uh, deny that blue buff, but it looks like. KT is going to be able to take it anyway. Guy there did not. <laughs> <laughs> and they uh, tried to get a knock up onto easy and didn't exactly work out. So. Yep. Lane swap coming in. Nothing too fancy so far. Uh, looks like Wave will be pressed up, so someday he's going to try his luck here, getting some farm down at the bottom turret. but. Uh, freeze happening up at the top side. So. You know, they did end up lane swapping, didn't they? Yeah. We talked about how that's kind of uh, right. aren't taking a lot of damage. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit weird considering you ban out some of these picks that you're so concerned about. Where if you're going to lane swap, but there's never any guarantee that you're going to get the lane swap anyway. But I do think this is definitely working out. Well, if they can kind of shut down Marin's Maokai too, we just saw the stats. He's been extremely good on that champion throughout the season. Certainly been one of his best. Well, KT got the freeze advantage here, too, so someday going to have a bit of an easier time, and KT just going to freeze that right next to the turret again. Maron, very little mana right now in order to deal with this or break it in any way, but with Wolf there, he'll be able to walk up a little bit more confidently. We also saw that, I mean, the Kog'Maw can do well against the Corky early just because you do outrange him in terms of poke. Yeah. Before six, so advantages you can take right there, but Arrow just going to use that shield right there, absorb some of that minion damage, someday pushing all the way up, and starting to really come out ahead in terms of his CS. So, Marin has to go back, will teleport right back into top lane with the second Doran's ring. Given perhaps the, the edge he's looking for right here. Yeah, both top laners using their teleports early on in this match, so no big deal there. It is very annoying to deal with this situation though as a top laner. Finally they get that minion wave into the tower so that the 
Pressure can reverse. Easy Hoon and Nagne just farming it out as expected in this mid lane. Maybe going for the Stalker's Blade. Oh, okay. Actually, that's not something uh, Vi mostly played in other regions. And in North America, a lot of these Vi players prefer to go with the Trailblazer for some faster clear speed. Ah, but Bengi invading. He wants to do a bit of dueling here, but he's going to get caught, makes it over the wall. Score's going to flash for this one. Nagne coming down and someday coming up to intercept Bengi may have been like the Dwarves of Moria, man. He delved too greedily and too deep. And I don't think he's making it out. First blood goes to score. That ward not quite worth it for Bengi. Well, and normally you would be able to play into the side of your AD carry, but in this case, Bang just had no mana in order to actually respond in any meaningful way. Someday completely topped off for health and mana. So Bengi misreading that situation a bit. Xerath also didn't have pressure on the mid lane, Easy Hoon. So Nagne was able to walk into his jungle. Yeah. And because his support was topside in this case, he was playing with fire a little bit, actually. And that's a good read, though. You know what Bengi's going to do these days, which is try and get those deep wards in as early as possible. But he has to be able to watch his lanes right there because if you don't have a pressure advantage, the collapse is much faster from the enemy team, and that's exactly what happened. Also, the fact that Bang just like couldn't do anything, didn't have any items yet, didn't have any mana. There was just absolutely nothing. So Bengi picking a pretty poor time to go ahead and walk into the enemy jungle. Yep. Certainly doesn't do SK Telecom any favors. They are down about 1,000 gold against KT already. Someday having a little bit of an easier time farming. Yeah, and that's due to the due to what happened with the freeze early right. on in this game. Didn't see SKT freeze the minion wave, and they've been punished for it. So lane swap advantage definitely going to KT, and they'll be happy with that, taking that advantage into the later game. Uh, KT, we haven't seen them really with a, an advantage heading into the mid game before, but given what we saw their play against Najin looking like, I think that they're going to be pretty happy with that and in a very good position to win this game if they can keep up with the good team fighting and the eye on the win conditions that we've seen them have as of late. Yeah, a win over SK Telecom here by KT would be pretty huge. Likely they're still out of the playoffs no matter what happens mm -hmm. in this game, but that chance to play the spoiler is was very attractive to them, and at least they'll get a confidence boost with this roster that hasn't been able to produce much so far this season. Well, I think it has much bigger implications, too, uh, regarding the situation with CJ, with Jin Air, with the kind of top four in this bracket, and SK Telecom loss could shake, uh, shake things up a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely could. Interesting, someday deciding not to recall earlier, a bit of a sloppy switch in the lanes from KT. Someday did lose some farm right there. Uh, Bengi picked it up, but it did force him to show on the top side. So that could have been a little bit cleaner, I think, from KT. Had someday recalled a little bit earlier, you could have just instantly teleported up into top. Yep. They're not going to be taking that. Instead, we'll walk back to lane. SKT choosing to not make a play right there. They were in the middle of a lane transition themselves. Well, I wonder if these teams are kind of thinking a bit about uh, Dragon as well, if they want to have their top laners save those teleports for now. Yeah, sure, that, that definitely comes into play, but it's still pretty early in the game for that, uh, especially with a dual lane moving into the bottom side of the map anyway. I just think that wasn't very well coordinated myself. You could burn the teleport here and probably still be pretty safe. Fan of uh, caster Kim Dong Joon. <laughs> which the Korean fans are very amused by. <laughs> yep. Nagane actually going for a Vamp Scepter, not a normal item that we see this early in Ezreal, but has been Helps taking a lot of harass from slightly longer range of Easy Hoon and needs to stay topped off because that Vi getting on top of him, if he gets low enough in terms of HP, could just be instantaneous death. Yeah. Well, he's got a good amount of burst at this point in the game. Yeah, it's especially scary once she finishes that warrior and Chan gets the armor penetration. Bengi actually taking the blue buff right there. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what he can do with it. Easy Hoon feeling like he doesn't need that at the moment. And here we and, go. Yep, Mari going in onto Someday. Someday with the flash still up. He's still got wild growth as well. There's the ult from Bengi. Someday with his own ultimate. And can he get out? He still has that flash. Flash though, there's the concussive blows coming in. 
from Vi, and are they just gonna dive this? It looks like they are. Zareth coming in, Bengi taking that one. I think it was meant to go to Izune. But either way, a kill for SK Telecom. Yeah, nice support right there. I was a bit worried about that dive, especially yeah. considering Marin was so low in mana, but it ended up working out. KT responding immediately with that dragon. Of course, they know Easy Hoon doesn't have an ult to steal it. Everybody's on the top side of the map. Oh, so teleport is. coming in, though, for Marin. They're going to try to make something happen here. Flash, and there's a stun on the score. Nogne turning around on it. SKT is in a bit of trouble here. Kills coming in. Whoa, look at the damage coming in from Easy Hoon. Healed up, though by Fixer, and boy, are they lucky Jana was there because that was very nearly a double kill easily for Easy Hoon. And someday coming in as well yeah. with the TP of his own. Wow, that was close. Yeah, tried to be cute there considering Wolf did have a bit of a flank, and KT's very squishy at this point in time. If we look at their itemization tier, so not a lot of combat stats on Anagne, as well as Sheen first instead of Phage. So you catch him out with that hard CC from Annie, and there's a real chance that multiple people go down. Yeah, they very nearly lost a, more than a, a person or two to a team fight there. Yeah, able to withdraw, like you said. Fixer picking the right time and place to ult right there in order to disengage. Bengi coming back up into the top side lane brush. There is a pink ward right there but he will be mirrored in his movements by score. 30 seconds, as we can see, till Assault and Battery comes up. Oh, Bold. he's going in on him. Score is right there. Someday turning around, no summoners. Marin in the lane as well, but Bengi wisely not following that one up. Good prediction. Now that we're going to fight over this pink ward for a little bit. I think they're just Score has no it. cataclysm that someday with the wild growth does represent a bit of a threat, so they're going to have to give it up. That minion wave is pretty big there too. Meanwhile, actually in the bot lane, Arrow getting very low. Doesn't look like they can finish him off though. Wolf, Wolf attempted a Tibber stun there. Yeah, nailed it too. Arrow had to use Flash. Yep. So they get a free summoner as a result of that use of Tibbers. Can they transition it? Elsewhere, however, Easy Hoon finds a pink ward of his own, so good clearing. Oh, Score's gonna go in on that one, though. Who's close by? Wolf is coming up. They're gonna get the flash from Score. A couple sure. summoners taken away from KT in the last minute or two. Not sure if Score had to flash right there with Tipper's already down. He may not have known that at the time, but. Could be, it just happened. Yeah. Uh, probably could have just walked out through the, the top brush. Wasn't too much threat. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, you get hit by a Xerath stun and suddenly things are a little bit more dangerous. <laughs> Not to mention Annie does still have stuns. Yeah, the follow up with Tibbers. the Q stun could have been dangerous, yeah. but even so, I think uh, could have taken his chances right there a little bit more, but at least he didn't die foolishly, isn't that right? Wouldn't uh, call him the immortal score if he was prone to dying a lot. <laughs> He's less immortal now that he has to engage, though. Yeah, that's true. It's part of the sad life of being a jungler. <laughs> or support. Oh, here we go. Arrow, they're going to blow him back after the ult from Bengi. Arrow's still very low, though. Wolf trying to poke him down with autos. Fixer in a little bit of trouble here. True Shot Barrage doesn't hit anybody. Arrow still low. Can they finish him? Bengi tries. Bang gets the kill. Meanwhile, the turnaround comes in. Score able to get the Cataclysm down onto Bengi. And wow, score. Nearly dies, but he's got just enough health via that potion to stay alive. Wow, such a Oof. narrow escape from score and fixer yeah. right there. Bengi tried to use the concussive blows to kill fixer in the back line. He hit, he managed to hit score in front, but it just wasn't enough to kill fixer. KT really escaping by the skin of their teeth right there. Could have easily gone three for one. Now the fights have been. Very close so far in this game. Yikes. SKT still with a slight gold advantage, but down a dragon, so. Yep. Pretty much even. And Easy Hoon, I think, is going to have to have a big game this time around, Doha. And he doesn't have a lot of protection to do it with, which is scary for him. Well, he's certainly done it before. He has done it before. He has proved that he can carry this SK Telecom team. It's just KT has looked sharp past the laning phase. And even though Bang has this immense gold lead right now, as we've come to expect, Arrow's farming really not up to par compared to a lot of other AD carries in this league. And it, you know what? It's, it's kind of doubly surprising, too, because Arrow was the one who got the lane freeze in this game. And for him to be down, what, 30 CS right now is 
really a bad sign. Yeah. He had so much time just to free farm his, his heart out. Well, if you're going to siege too, that again, you know, takes away from the farming opportunities for that Cogwine. He's just not going to have a whole lot of items unless it can take a lot of turrets really quickly or get some kills. Well, he's down the Trinity Force advantage right now also. Bang. Big time, yeah. Bang. Already with that, 3.15 minutes thanks to those two kills. Kogma still scrambling to catch up a little bit. Dogne will go ahead and take the blue buff. He does have the Muramana, or Manamune rather, finally. Yeah, probably not going to see the Muramana for a little bit yet. But he's trying trying to stack those tiers. Right now, the only tiers, though, I think really are on Arrow's side. Score, trying to get some vision around the pit right now. Good setup, 30 seconds before the objective spawns. Uh, dang, continue to take harassment, but he's able to heal right back up thanks to his quick vamp scepter. I'm curious whether Marin's gonna go for that Righteous Glory early on or not. I imagine he will. Oh yeah, he's got the catalyst, and yeah, we can see Maokai turn that into Rod of Ages, but it's been a popular uh, item to build tonight. Oh, it just depends on the composition, but against of this. Oh, Wolf has the flash, almost a little bit of trouble there. Two-shot barrage comes through again. Nagne's two-shot barrages have not really been on point yet this game. That's really important, that two-shot barrage going down or uh, the uh, flash going down for Annie, rather, because yeah. that's going to help so much to not have up during this next engagement. Arrow struggling to keep Bang off the tower right here. Rockets raining in on the minion line, and this tower has been really chipped so far, so it's a hard decision, I think, for KT. So what to do? They can't really get into the pit to control that vision as long as that bottom turret's pushed all the way back into the lane. Oh, we've seen this happen so many times before. You know, you just chip away at the turrets and keep doing that, and then if you win a fight near Dragon, if you get an important pick, suddenly three turrets are down. You take a big gold lead and try to snowball from there. So, yeah, threats certainly looming for KT right now. And look at that. SKT did get all those wards out from behind the pit, so they will just have Vi go right over the wall. Not into the dragon it, pit. Yeah, not actually looking for that. Interestingly, they're not so confident. Kogma in the bottom lane still. Bengi, what's he recalling for right now, I wonder? Boots. Boots. Of course, the boots. Ninja tabby. Yeah. Wants to be able to last a little bit longer against Arrow, maybe Nagne a bit too. Yeah, and there's no real prerogative for SKT here to make a move onto this dragon as long as they continue to chip away at these towers. They're in the position of control right now. They're forcing KT to react. So there's no need to be preemptive to go onto this dragon where you can just keep on pushing down the lane because eventually once these towers go down, it'll be much easier for you to get that dragon anyway. So I like what SKT is doing. They're not over committing. They're just making sure they have the vision, making sure they know whether KT is doing it, and just pushing, pushing, pushing constantly. And it's it's really tying up a lot of scores time right now. Well, that's kind of what you want to do against KT, though, right? You want to try to find a way to occupy score and not allow him to uh, do what he does best, which is try to provide opportunities. And we may see a bit of a dive here. That turret getting extremely low. No, I just want to know where score was, make sure that he They'll wasn't setting up for an EQ and a Cataclysm combo while they completed the siege. Yep, and there right. we go, like clockwork, get that tower down, push it up, and now you can safely take that dragon. Really patient, nice play from SKT. And there's not really going to be a way to contest this. Yeah, so that's so going to be... Love that. Great planning. Evens up things as well as far as the dragons go. SKT manages to do that. And now, you know, you combine that with the fact that the top turret, I believe, is a bit low, as is the mid turret, and SK Telecom is in a position where they could start to kind of snowball things here. Create a bigger lead, maybe. Yeah, the real problem is Bang being up 50 CS. Arrow really was not doing a good job of CSing under his turret, and he continued to, to fall further and further behind. And we talked about that, too. He specifically has had issues in CSing this season, and so putting him on a champion that's so dependent on that, like Kogma, is a big risk. Yeah, and putting him in a composition where Kogma's damage output is pretty darn important yeah. to the success of the game. 
It's not like you have to get kills, but at least you can't fall this far behind on the Kog'Maw, especially in a lane swap situation. There's really no excuse. Now, there goes the mid lane turret. Two shot barrage is not going to save this one. And that gold lead starting to grow quite a bit, up to 2k suddenly. And really no wards on the map either from KT Rolster. If Vision is now being dominated by SK Telecom. Yep. Keep on getting deeper and deeper into enemy territory with those wards as well. Yeah. It's just been patient, methodical play. SKT knows what they want to do, and they are executing it beautifully. I feel like, too, overall, Benki's doing a pretty good job of, uh, you know, not going too far after that first blood, but, you know, is now being a little bit safer. Well, he's, he's definitely taking fewer risks, playing a little bit more intelligently and respectfully, which is certainly what was needed after that iffy jungle movement early on in the game that yeah. cost his team the first blood. But ever since then, he's been just doing very well controlling KT's warding, making sure that he's got the pressure in the right place and drawing score there as well. He's kind of forcing score's movements at the moment. And this is another game, score playing lane triage once again. It seems like that's unfortunately Score's position on this team is that one of his lanes starts to get behind and then he has to kind of sit there and just make sure nobody tries to kill them. And so he's been on that bottom side of the map for a long time now. Someday holding his own a bit better this game, however. Yeah, he's staying up on CS for now. And here's Bang, smooth rotations. You know, we've Onto seen the last outer turret. It couldn't really be going better for SKT. Yeah. We've seen so many, we've seen this type of thing so often actually from KT where like we talked about, score is occupied going around, making sure people don't die. And because of that, KT just really never has any sort of opportunities to get the ball rolling, you know? Well, at least they took a tower down here. Arrow, fortunately, the only one around that turret. So he will get some much needed gold. Yeah be quite happy that he was able to take that one without any help whatsoever. We'll see what he buys help with it. Bootstrap him back into this game. Oh boy. And there is the finished Berserker Greaves, and he'll be going most likely into a blade SKT next. KT might catch Nagne here. Oh, stun comes out. Nagne checking that with the uh, Mystic shot. Had a feeling something was up. There really wasn't any vision of SKT besides Marin anywhere on the map at the moment. Yeah, smart play. Interesting, uh, Nagne is going for the Trinity Force instead of an Iceborne Gauntlet. I feel against SKT's composition of Maokai Annie that maybe the Iceborne may be a little bit more worthwhile considering you're trying to counter out their hard engage with a little bit more uh, kiting. But yeah, of course, the, I mean, la the lack of AD poke on the enemy team certainly makes that armor not as useful. Even so. Iceborne may, may be the better item choice right here. Oops, double pink in that ward from KT. Oh, well. That means it takes 10 hits to clear that brush. <laughs> it's the ultimate bait. Yeah. It's the one you have the most time to respond to, I suppose. We could say it that way. That sounds good, right? We'll, so we'll spin it in a positive way for these, these pro players. Nah, I was going to say it's a bad mistake. All right. Take well, that, KT. Well, it is, so that's OK. <laughs> Minute 30 until Dragon comes up again. Let's see who's able to take it. A pretty passive game across the board, but slowly but surely SK Telecom pushing the map back towards KT Rolster. Yeah, this is really dangerous for KT. Well, they're at that point where they kind of need somebody to be a playmaker to get out of this one. Well, they have to group and continue to take down turrets is really the thing. But the problem, the problem is, with all their outer turrets going down so early, they're really vulnerable to flanks. Yeah. And this is a really scary team to get flanked by. Maokai and Vi. So in that circumstance, they have to be very sure of their warding. But SKT is doing a great job of removing enemy wards from the map and generally maintaining that vision advantage. And as they get bigger and bigger and tankier and tankier, even all those Lulu and Janna shields aren't going to save this Kog'Maw. They will simply be able to wait them out and grind down enough damage onto Kog'Maw in order to take this game. I don't really know how they're going to be pushing this one out for, uh, forward, rather. Bang is not actually going to be going for that bot lane farm. 
even though the wave is pretty far in advance. You see pings going down right now from KT onto the bot lane wave. It is slow pushing right now in favor of SK Telecom, but it's not going to be coming very quickly when it comes to maintaining control over this dragon. Oh, well, KT, the ones with control over the dragon at the moment. They don't have the Rift Scholar, but they do have pretty much everything else. Can they take it, though? Dragons are tied up one apiece. And all right, so mid lane pushed up a bit. Tried to scare Nogne away. A little bit of damage coming in. Ah, but they've got the shield there for Lulu, so. Oh, my cat actually going into the bottom lane. They do have a slow push developing, so they could choose to create an even bigger minion wave for pressure and just continue to play against the round of the dragon until that happens. But they want to make a stronger move now, it seems. And considering they have this engage composition instead of a poke comp, I think that's probably a wise idea. If you're playing a poke comp in this situation, you just wait for the maximum amount of pressure to build because you can't all in. But really, SKT just wants to catch somebody out right here next to the Dragon Pit. So starting that go. objective and forcing it is going to be the best strategy for their composition. Here's uh, the TP. Someday is going to teleport in here. Can KT stop this Dragon? Getting a little bit low. Looks like SKT is going to get it. Now the engage. Marin goes in on the score. Will they just back off or will they fight here? They don't really need to. And KT certainly isn't going to really want to fight this. Score looking for maybe an opportunity to come in, but he's being zoned very well by Marin. Two-shot barrage takes a little bit of damage out of Bengi, but overall SKT going to be able to back off. Marin pops that ultimate and they'll be able to save their mid lane turret too. So pretty smooth by SKT there. This whole game has been really pretty smooth by SKT. They've been controlling these objectives beautifully and always thinking one step ahead about what they need to put pressure on, what they need to defend. And so because of that minion wave in bottom, it forces Arrow down there. They do have to go back and deal with that. Gives them a chance to recall after that dragon without worrying too much about their mid lane tier one. Yeah. SK Telecom seemingly thinking just a little bit in advance of their opponents in this game, and it's really paying off. KT not able to respond with pretty much anything. So far, so good for SK Telecom. Now, Marin actually going for the Frozen Heart. That, interesting choice, but against double AD, you're planning on being in those team fights. Of course, it makes sense. Yeah. But will limit his engage somewhat. Of course, I'm that Righteous Glory is going to be pretty critical uh, against the composition that we see KT running. I'm still a little bit surprised that we're seeing KT run this comp at all, you know? It doesn't seem like one that plays their strengths really at all. Well, they, they actually played the uh, the Ezreal Corky poke comp pretty darn well in their last series. So I think that they, they showed a good ability to kite, which is why we're seeing this come into play. It's a bit more intricate than all that, you know? The, it is. a little bit. It, I will say it is harder to run. I think that uh, they weren't able to get Corky this game, though. It was first picked by SKT, so yeah. they wanted that. They may have just fallen by the wayside. Well, Score trying to take out that pink board. Doesn't look like there's anything SKT can do to stop it. But still, just KT has is having just a really hard time of putting any sort of pressure on the mid and top lane. Wow, I'm really surprised Bengi is the one clearing out this side wave right here. He's kind of constantly showing where he is. And, it, you know, if KT sees that and they have wards on their flanks, they really should make a more aggressive play for one of these turrets in terms of their poking. But it's not going to happen. Marin waiting to see if someday we'll walk forward. Meanwhile, yeah, Bengi just clearing out some wards in the Baron pit. We are kind of getting to that time where teams are going to be a bit, con or, uh, a bit concerned about it. All right, SKT, they know they have the vision control over Baron right now. They're going to not quite start it. That was an accident by Bay, I believe. Yep. And this is what they want. As long as they can as long as long they can keep a ring of wards around that Baron bit, they can force a face check. KT is playing with a composition that must have vision advantage, or they will just get all in by the crazy amount of hard CC on oh. SK Telecom. There's a check right there onto the Baron. That's how worried they are at this point in time. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh boy, that nearly was pretty bad for Wolf. One more of those may have actually finished him off. He's Wolf. gonna recall an award. 
does have to get out of dodge, and Bengi trying oh. to deal with this last... Oh, oh man. So annoying. Gotta be careful. He's lucky he didn't get hit by that uh, spike attack from Baron, too, because that does stun you for a moment. Trying to zone him off, but they yep. can't quite eliminate these pesky wards in the back of the pit. Just more and more keep on dropping. Time to defend mid lane. Yeah, well, they, they forced Baron to chunk some members out, so Nagne and the rest of KT doing their job in terms of playing this poke composition. Here's a flank coming in. A teleport coming in, and uh, will Marin be able to do anything? Not really. He's, it was all for that ward. He just wanted to take out the pink ward. He got it. The void ooze preventing the engage they would have liked to have had. Yeah. Wolf and Bengi with the oracles. Bengi for the raptor. Wolf from his lens. Continue to clear. All right, well, Bang isn't there right now. Going down to take that red buff. Dragging up a, in about a minute 20. So we're in that situation again where people are going to be fighting over that vision. KT, though, seemingly at a bit more of a disadvantage than uh, they were last time. Yeah, they may yeah. get a couple free pinks right here, however. SKT slipping up a bit, not having anyone there to defend their ward. So they lose quite a bit of gold as a result. Now, KT, I mean, they've they've made it work. SKT hasn't even found a window where they could have snuck a Baron. And they're going to be really liking their power spike right now. Not sure about this blade on Nagne, but I suppose if he's very concerned about the engage, it can open up a gap, open up some distance for him to escape. Iron Elixir already on Marin, so he is a big tree. All right, 30 seconds still Dragon. KT can tie it up, or tie the Dragon count, rather, with one here. Those are these scumbag 80 carries taking the crab on both sides of the map, <laughs> both teams. Denying. Don't, don't take the crab from your jungler. He gets 30 extra gold. One of my big pet peeves. You know, I would imagine SKT is probably just fine with trading this Dragon for a Baron. Really, Baron is where all the concern is right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And KT really can't leave it for a second. Yep. So KT, this looks pretty similar to their last game, actually, where we saw them consistently winning poke wars in the mid lane with the double AD composition. Yep. Now they are going to get split up a little bit. This is dangerous for KT. They can't allow themselves to get split like this because if they are engaged on, they will just instantly lose if they're split, That's especially why. when Lulu wasn't there. Yep. Okay, here we go. Dragon started. This would be the third for SK Telecom if they can take it. Someday coming in, it looks like it will be a third Dragon for SKT. And again, same situation as the last one. Are they going to turn? Nagne. They will on the Nagne. There's the ult from Zareth. It's going to be a kill for Bang. A couple Zareth ult remain and score! Takes a lot of damage. Bang with the double kill. So a Dragon and two kills to boot for SK Telecom. They can just turn right onto this Baron now even if they wanted to. And KT just looking like they can't get any sort of traction going here in the uh, beginning of the late game. Nogne was really out of position right there. I was very surprised to see him turn around on that one. It made it all too easy for Marin and Wolf just to get the pick. It seemed like there was a bit of a mixed call right there for KT about what was going on because he yeah. was just too far back to be protected. And that's an uncontested Baron in favor of SK Telecom. So three yeah. dragons, a Baron. Turret advantage, kill advantage, gold advantage, everything going SKT's way, and Marin coming in. Look at knows he can catch Nogne. Why did Nogne turn there? I I don't know. He walks straight into Maokai. That's, that's so. exactly the opposite of the way you want to play a poke composition. He had the whimsy on him too. He certainly could have escaped. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. That's a that's a pretty terrible error. I don't know if like Ezreal's really concerned with the environment or something, but that is not the tree you want to try hugging. <laughs> maybe he's trying to chop it down, Doa. Maybe, maybe it's Lumberjack, uh, the Lumberjack Ezreal. Gonna need a bigger axe. Slices down a whole forest with his true shot barrage. Makes Captain well, Planet cry. We know that's impossible because, well, one, Captain Planet is incapable of emotion, and two, <laughs> And two is we've seen it go through trees many times. It doesn't seem to affect them, you know. It's kind of like that's true. It's kind of like they there was like that that bomb or whatever that only affected living things. It didn't. Well, I suppose trees are living things, but 
It didn't affect buildings. And essentially, in Summoner's Rift, trees are just buildings in disguise. I don't know what that bomb you're talking about is. A neutron bomb, man. Oh, OK. Yeah. I'm not saying it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. This is yet another thing that I am not making it's up. He, it's he, though, uh, at this point, I feel like you're just playing the long con now. You're going to make it. You're going to tell me a bunch of stuff. And uh, then eventually, you're just going to sneak it. It's like six months from now. You're going to sneak in something really ridiculous, and I'm going to believe it. So I just choose to I'm, believe nothing. I'm definitely going to. I become the Doa nihilist. I believe nothing you say. I would definitely do that, too. You're, <laughs> you're smart. You're smart to have that mindset. Yeah. I can't. I can't really argue with that. <laughs> it's Doa's long con to make me look dumb on cast. If you believe in nothing Doa says. <laughs> can't argue with that. You got me there. Yep. You don't want to be the caster that cried Doa. <laughs> I know how you work. I know your tricks. I'm on to you. Uh, the trolling is strong. It's true. <laughs> no, it's not trolling until it is. That's the thing. If it was the constant trolling, it would wouldn't, be easy. A very, wouldn't that mean it was a very subtle troll? <laughs> trolling by not trolling is the only the, true trolling. The long troll, as it were. Yeah, that's true. Another people, turn for SKT. People just get caught up in the short troll, you know. Yeah. They think it's funny, but it's really the long troll where the good laughs are. The payoff at the end is the <laughs> sweetest thing. It's true. I'm going to get you for this. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, you're going to get me for you're gonna, Wait, you're going to get me for informing you of obscure trivia? I'm expanding your mind. I'm, I'm making you a more knowledgeable, well-rounded caster. This is what I get in return? That's right. Wow. I hate knowledge. I'm not. I'm just gonna have to cast with everybody but you at IEM. <laughs> just gonna stay away. People be like, I thought those guys were buddies. I'm like, no. Monty and Doar feuding now. <laughs> the great war, the great casting war has begun. That's right. Put out. We're just putting out a face for the broadcast. <laughs> Let's get Telecom. I mean, what, what what do you really say? Where do you, where do you go from here in this game if you're KT? There's, it's gonna be quietly pretty. into the grave. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, Timberstone, they catch someday, and that's a lot of damage. Alts himself, and that means no wild growth for Arrow if they need it. I think we're gonna see another turret taken by SKT pretty quick. And yeah, not a lot that SK, not a lot the KT can do here. And we've said this before, but very low margin for error with a composition like this. And yep. But uh, KT. Mistakes were made. <laughs> the mistakes were made. Perhaps in picks and bans. And while uh, KT has a low margin of error, SKT has a whole Marin of error ready for them. <laughs> Not a lot of errors made by Marin, but he capitalizes on them very well. Yeah, now he has that righteous glory too. It's actually amazing that he just held the catalyst until this back. Uh oh. Because they've been really confident in Benki and Wolf's ability to catch them out, and that confidence has been well founded. You know, no, I feel if Nagne had had a Iceborne Gauntlet there. Or yeah, frozen I agree. fist, he may have been able to get a kill on Benji. Uh, well, I, I think that he could have done more with the Iceborne Gauntlet this game, period. Yeah. I understand, of course, his reluctance to build that item, considering that it isn't optimal in terms of statistics with that armor in this particular game, but I think it would have served him well purely for its utility. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey. Dragon up in a few seconds, so are they going to give up two turrets for this? I don't think they need to. SKT coming back in, and they're certainly in a situation where they can win a team fight and then take the Dragon as well. I think this game also started to get out of hand when uh, Arrow lost lane so hard. He's still yeah. the DCS down. He doesn't have a Last Whisper yet, and he's dealing with a Thornmail Frozen Heart Maokai. And what is he supposed to do? He can have all the shields in the world to live, but he's just simply not going to do damage Things are looking against grim. Marin and Benki. So, at least not until that last whisper comes into play. SKT not really even bothering hey. to clear out wards properly. They have that speed shrine too, so poking them going to be very difficult. There is seen this before. And Dragon taken by SK Telecom. Benki's going to grab it. There's the ult from Fixer, but that's just going to allow SKT to come right back in and get a kill on him. Barn a little bit low. Score. There's a double kill for Bang, and SKT just all over this team fight, as we knew they would be. And 
Yeah, this one's this one's over, guys. And Bengi with that GA, I mean, he got that early GA and it really paid off right there. He was yeah. able to absorb all the cooldowns pretty much and then actually managed to stay alive, pushing forward smoothly into KT's base and bang with the Trinity Force, Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge build. What a great build, by the way, against this composition. I mean, those those, that burst that he's going to be able to do with the crits and the sheen uh, they, are just going to tear through KT. They don't have really any armor. Can they just end here? I don't yep. know. Score and Arrow are going to be up very soon. But again, Arrow just doesn't have a lot of power well, against the Maokai like that. Well, I mean, the turret can. He's certainly giving it an opportunity. But there goes the second Nexus turret. Just advance on to someday just to lock him up long enough for Bang and the rest of SKT to take down this Nexus at 40 minutes. It'll be an easy win for SK Telecom. And... That does not bode well for KT in this series, does it? No, and beyond that early hiccup by Bengi, ill-advised ward timing, SK Telecom looked so clean. Yes, very, they did. Very, very crisp, methodical play from these guys right from the beginning of this game. Even though they fell a little bit behind, they didn't have an optimal lane swap, and KT played the lane swap better. At least initially, Arrows kind of falling behind in terms of his CSing proved yeah. to be a bit of their undoing. I just think it was a poor uh, composition choice for KT, obviously. Arrow is not up for uh, that kind of role. And I don't know, I, especially against an SK uh, team like SK Telecom. I just think you're gonna have a really hard time running it. That's exactly what we saw, an easy victory for SKT.